and it is a very interesting and useful problem for JE from American Mathematical Examination 2024. Let's try this question. Let O A B be the points on the coordinate plane. So we have got three points O A half comma zero and B which is zero comma root three. Let F be the family of segments PQ of unit lengths lying in the first quadrant with P on x-axis and Q on y-axis. There is a unique point C on AB distinct from A and B that doesn't belong to any of the segment from F other than AB. Then we need to find a point C. And once you know C, you can easily find distance OC squared. Okay, so before we go and solve this problem, it's recommended to take a pause and think for this. Let's solve this problem now. So the major part is to understand what does family of segments will look like. So in any situation, family of segments PQ is of unit length. So its length is unity, where P is on x-axis and Q is on y-axis. Now it's very typical J problem where a ladder is sliding along the coordinate axis and you have to find locus a particular point. Now this question is something more interesting. So let's say this is a particular configuration of this ladder. Once this point Q goes up, clearly P has to move in this direction so as to maintain the length as well. Let me show you some other configuration. In the limiting case, the ladder will slip on the x-axis or it will just rest on the y-axis. Now depending upon various configuration, definitely if I select any point on the plane, maybe it will be intersected by many of such line segments. Okay. So the meaning of problem is we have clearly a line segment AB, which is a ladder of length 1 by Pythagoras theorem because AB is square is 1 by 4 plus 3 by 4, which is 1. Now, of course, we can have a ladder like this or ladder in this configuration and maybe in this configuration and so on and so forth. Definitely, we can have a ladder like completely horizontal or completely vertical or we can have a ladder in this configuration or ladder in this configuration and so on and so forth. If I'll consider any point, let's see if I consider this point. Now it is clearly on two different ladders or two different configuration of this line segment. Okay. So this one and AB. Now the question is, is there just a unique point C? Let's call alpha comma beta. On the line segment AB, on this line segment AB, such that no other configuration of ladder will pass through that magical point C. It means if I let's say make like a slide over this, we'll definitely miss that point C. So no other configuration will pass through this. Okay. So there is just unique line AB which is containing a special point C. No other family members will pass through that. And that makes this problem really interesting. Let's see how we can go about this. Just to make the situation simpler. Let me draw just one subcase of this AB. Uh, once I have drawn AB, let's take a point C alpha comma beta. Now suppose if we contradict our statement, let's say there exist other configuration of ladder with the orientation theta. There exists some other configuration of ladder such that this also passes through the same point C. Let's say the inclination of this configuration is theta. So now we can easily write the equation of both line AB since coordinate of A is half comma 0, 0 comma root 3 by 2. So equations of AB is x by half plus y by root 3 over 2 equals 1. And with this angle theta, I know this distance is 1 cos theta and that's going to be Q, let's say sine theta. 
so x by cos theta plus y by sin theta is going to be 1. Now, the point C can be just calculated by substituting one point to their equation. So, from the first one, y equals 1 minus 2x times root 3 over 2. And that I'll plug in the second one. So, we have x by cos theta plus y which is root 3 by 2, 1 minus 2x over sine theta equals 1. So, this is a beautiful relation that we got for the point of intersection alpha comma beta. So hence point alpha will satisfy. So the, when x coordinate is alpha for point C alpha by cos theta plus root 3 by 2 1 minus 2x So, point C will satisfy this equation. Hence, alpha by cos theta plus root 3 over 2, 1 minus 2 alpha by sin theta should be 1. Now, all that we need is to analyze this expression. Now, what does this expression mean? Clearly, it's we have two variables, alpha and theta. Okay? And what is the significance of these equations that we are getting in alpha and theta? It represents like for a given value of alpha for a given value of alpha means for a given position of point fixed on line a b there might exist many lines which is passing through that point c it means there can be many configuration of theta because you know angle a that which is making with the x-axis is just 60 degree so for a given c values for a given c value we can have two lines you see line a b and line p q over here or maybe many more that we'll see mathematically so what we want we don't want p q to come into picture it means we want to find a special location for x coordinate of point c and definitely y will fix accordingly such that there is no other family which is passing through C apart from A and B. It means for this equation, we want a special alpha at which the only solution in theta should be theta equal to 60 degree. Now let me again make this statement very clear. So we know we have A and B over here let's say we have some point c having coordinate alpha comma beta now if there exists some other line with other orientation theta which is not equal to 60 degree theta is not equal to 60 degree so clearly we have two line l1 and l2 such that both of them is passing through the same point c but we don't want this condition we want there should be only unique line which is contained on c so in that case this equation should have unique solution for a special value of alpha and that solution should be theta equal to 60 degree because if theta equals 60 this l1 becomes l2 and hence we have only unique line as a b so roughly what we'll do since we can't handle both of the variable together into two d plane so for a particular x for a particular alpha for a fixed alpha let's try to plot the lhs so i'm calling this entire lhs as let's say f of theta for a fixed alpha for instance let's say if i take alpha equals 1 by 4 so lhs will be a function of theta right for a particular value of alpha this quantity will be fixed right so lhs is just a function of theta so i'm trying to plot function right a by cos theta plus b by sin theta Okay, let's call this a m. So roughly how this function will look like. So roughly how this function will look like. We know when theta is tending to 0, this quantity will become 0. Hence, it will go to infinity. At theta tending to 90, this will tend to 0. Hence, this will go to infinity. So roughly between 0 to pi by 2. We know at, at theta tends to 0. So theta versus 
f theta and remember when i am plotting f theta for a particular value of x so for x equals constant so this red curve is for some constant alpha let's say alpha equals some alpha 1 let's say 1 by 4 okay now you can clearly see uh, now if for some particular alpha if this equals 1 might give two solutions right because there might exist two configuration of theta for which we will get the same answer it will be many like at least two solutions right again if i will change alpha values and still if that output has to be the one still we can get two solutions right so we want some alpha such that if alpha keep on changing we must get exactly one solution right exactly one solution for theta not two solutions and that solution should be nothing but 60 degree and now the problem is completely in our hand because i can clearly find for a particular alpha alpha equal to constant the minima of these functions and at what angle the minima will come at theta equal to 60 degree so let's blindly differentiate the function alpha y cos theta plus root 3 by 2 1 minus 2 alpha y sin theta which i am calling function f theta so at this will be achieved one when theta equal to 60 degree so there must be exactly one solution right so for a particular alpha is special with y equal to one line theta equal to 60 degree must be the point of mean so let's calculate f dash alpha it's minus alpha y cos square theta into minus sin theta plus root 3 by 2 minus 2 alpha of sin square theta minus of that to cos theta now setting this equals to 0 which will give the point of minima we get simply alpha sin theta by cos square theta equals root 3 by 2 1 minus 2 alpha cos theta by sin square theta which evaluates to sin cube theta over cos cube theta equals root 3 by 2 1 minus 2 alpha by alpha. now we know since the mean is already achieved at theta equal to 60 so this is nothing but 10 cube 60 and that's going to be 3 root 3 plus root 3 over 2 1 by alpha minus 2 this cancels so you have 6 equals 1 by alpha minus 2 plus alpha equals 1 by 8 so we know when alpha is 1 by 8 that is a special location at which the minima will be achieved it means for alpha equals 1 by 8 so this is a curve which represents alpha equals 1 by 8 will have only one point of intersection any point of intersection for any other alpha will have more point of intersection now some of you might feel like what's happening if you further increase the alpha right so why there is no point of intersection uh, this is because of the fact like when these two lines intersects the point of intersection is c is having a restricted x coordinate what is that this x coordinate must be between zero to half right even strictly speaking alpha must belongs to 0 to half because both cannot be attended actually the in points so because of this if you are taking any other values of alpha which is more than half so practically it's not possible okay so that must give no solution so these are all values of alpha which is more than half it doesn't make any sense in the practical situations so now with alpha equals 1 by 8 we can easily calculate beta because that lies on this line so with 1 by 8 we'll get beta equals root 3 by 2 1 minus 2 times 1 by 8 so root 2 over 2 into 3 by 4 so 3 root 3 by 8 hence 3 root 3 by 8 and our question was just to find this invite the problem uh, of course i could have given you solutions really fast but i tried my best to give the solutions in a completely j style the obvious solutions for this problem can be given by partial derivative because of the two variables appearing in the system 
uh, one more ideas can be used is the envelope uh, so basically these ladders will form an envelope envelope in the sense like all these configurations of ladder any point in this ladder latex cannot go beyond a particular threshold curve boundary okay i hope you have enjoyed the problem and these j relevant problems from coordinate geometry combinatorics and calculus 3d vectors and other fundamental algebra or linear algebra i'll come with you please do like and subscribe to the channel